March 28th. We're on our way to the movie. We're here. <laughs> I guess welcome back to my Monster vs. Thon. You're probably surprised to see me here in person. <laughs> I just got back from the theater after watching Godzilla Kong The New Empire. And I have some thoughts on it. This will be a non-spoiler review. I won't get into specifics. I'll try to be vague with my opinions. I might do a full spoiler review later on. But as of now, it's going to be a non-spoiler review. So... I don't know when you're seeing this, it, probably tomorrow or later tonight, but for me it's 10, oh, I don't know what time it is, it's, last I checked it's 10. But yeah, I just got back from the theater and, well, I liked it. I really liked it. First of all, it is the first MonsterVerse movie to actually feel like a sequel, which is a great thing. This movie also gave Monarch Legacy of Monsters vibes through all of it. It, I, I can't really explain it, but it just, it felt like a Monarch Legacy of Monsters episode. That's not a, that's not a negative. I really liked that show and the vibe it brought, but yeah, it really felt great. Okay, let's start getting into stuff. Um, I did not expect to tear up in the theater, honestly. Gia and Eileen Andrews, they had a beautiful dynamic. And is I'm not going to get into specifics, but there's a particular scene which is heartbreaking with, between them. And, and then there's Trapper and Bernie Hayes, which I really liked them. They were the two funniest characters of this movie, in my opinion. Trapper is just... He's insane. <laughs> From the trailers, I kind of felt like he was going to be a Nathan stand-in. A Nathan Lynn stand-in, but he was not at all. He... <laughs> he was just... He was a great character. He was my favorite character from this movie. And then there's Bernie Hayes, which he was funny. He had some great lines, but there's some other stuff with him being an in, a podcast and internet guy, which it kind of got annoying fast, but it was fine. It was only a few short sentences, and it's all right. And now we're going to get into the monsters. So... The monster action was great. It was well choreographed. The landscapes, this is kind of irrelevant, but the landscapes were awesome. And, um, Kong is just such an emotionally charged character, uh, as always, but it was even sadder this time because he finds his kind again and they reject him, basically. It's just, it was so heartbreaking. Kong finally finds his kind and they attack him. And then there's Godzilla, which he was amazing in this movie as always. His his scene in Rome was great. <laughs> Him curled up like a cat in the Colosseum was funny. I I don't well I, it was definitely the intention, but Godzilla curled up in the Colosseum with the epic music playing. It's just kind of like it's kind of funny this epic music playing over Godzilla waking up. <laughs> from catnapping in the middle of the Colosseum. But yeah, there's... And then there's the French scene. In the, in, there's the scene in France where he goes to... Well, he goes to a power plant, and that was a pretty good sequence. 
However, there is one negative I have with his character, and this isn't really with his character. Well, his storyline results in two deaths. Two deaths which I wish didn't happen, but I'm fine with it happening. I'm not going to say who they were, because this is a non-spoiler review after all. But it was unfortunate to see those two characters die, because they were really good. And, okay, I'm going to stop talking before I reveal it. So, and then there's Godzilla Evolved, which is the same Godzilla, and he was great. The pink really, the pink and the slenderness really grew on me. He was crazy, sort of. He... There's a scene in Egypt with him and Kong, and he's just going off the rails. I don't know if the, if the energy or something made him angrier, or if he's just angry to see Kong again. I think it might be the second one. But yeah, he was just kind of crazy all the time. And I don't... I don't know what happened to him. He woke up on the wrong side of the bed or something because he was just, he was a menace. And now we are at Scar King and Shimo, which I'm going to start with Scar King. I, the trailers did not do him justice at all. They did not do him justice. I've seen a lot of people disappointed with Scar King in this movie. I don't know why they are. I have never hated a villain before. I have never hated a villain as much as I do Scar King. The things he does to these Kongs are awful. It's just, he was such a bad, well, not a bad character. He was such an evil character. He's more evil than Ghidorah, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah. Alright, and then there's Shimo, which... Shimo was kind of tragic. She, she was being controlled by Scar King, and I don't have much to say about her because she's a spoiler, sort of. But she was kind of tragic. So... Yeah, I'm just gonna end that thought there. So yeah, those are just my spoiler-free first impressions. Um, I... Loved this movie. I w I had my expectations. I had my expectations were down here for this. I was prepared to walk out of this like I did Godzilla vs. Kong. This is a story that I've never told, but I walked out of Godzilla vs. Kong not feeling like I'd watched a full-length movie. The pa I felt like I had just watched the pilot of a TV show. Which is basically my way of that was basically younger me's way of saying the pacing was it wasn't great. So the the pacing was kind of meh here too, but it wasn't as terrible. This is definitely an improvement over Godzilla vs. Kong in my opinion. So plugging it into the score, I am going to give Godzilla Kong the New Empire a 9 out of 10. Godzilla Kong the New Empire is so great. I was extremely worried that the teaser didn't do the movie justice. It did. It really did. Scar King is evil. Godzilla and Kong are great. Everything was just so superb in this movie. It was surprising, to say the least. <sighs> So, yeah, thank you for watching, I guess, and I'll, I'll see you later. Bye, guys.